Hello and welcome. My name is Ryan Thomas and I'm a faculty support and classroom consultant at Ashford University. And I will be the host for this session titled The Practicum Resource Center, Real World Solutions in an Online Environment. Microphones will be muted for this presentation, but I encourage you to pose questions and comments in the chat. Also, keep your eye on the chat for a helpful session feedback survey. Now I'm pleased to introduce our presenters, Peter Lombardo, Curriculum Specialist 2 at Zovio, and co-presenter, Dr. Charles Holmes, lead faculty at Ashford University. Okay, thank you, Ryan. And welcome everybody to our presentation, the Practicum Resource Center, Real World Solutions in an Online Environment. Today, we're gonna to take you on a journey of the Practicum Resource Center to de demonstrate the importance of having a separate fit space for student support as they work towards reaching their career and educational goals. While exploring, we will share the unique look, design, and feel of the center and how it provides students with the tools necessary for successful completion of their practicum and degree program. For starters, as mentioned, my name is Peter Lombardo, a curriculum specialist too at Zovio. I currently am responsible for working with faculty members as an instructional designer, and I'm also a curriculum specialist building, maintaining, and revising courses in Canvas. I've been fortunate enough to be working with the Master of Public Health team since the beginning, and I've been working with the team throughout the entire process of development and creation of the Practicum Resource Center which we'll be discussing in this presentation. Working with me on this project is Dr. Charles Holmes. Dr. Holmes has been with Ashford since 2013 and is the program chair for the Master of Public Health program. Dr. Holmes remains the key voice regarding revisions and enhancements needed in the Practicum Resource Center to ensure student success. Before we begin navigating the Practicum Resource Center, Dr. Holmes will discuss a blended learning environment and the benefits it serves for students in the MPH program. Thank you, Peter. Uh, a blended learning environment is a method in which you create multiple touch points for key classroom and discipline specific information. Uh, two excellent examples in the Master of Public Health program here at Ashford are our learning community and the Practicum Resource Center. So within the Department of Health Science where the Master of Public Health is kind of housed, the learning communities are a collection of discipline-specific Canvas rooms where non-classroom but discipline-specific content can be accessed by students throughout the curriculum. So essentially anything you want as an instructor or a program chair like myself to have students have access to throughout their tenure, we place in the learning community. Uh, the learning community for the MPH program allows students to have access to real-time updates from public health organizations, thought leaders, it also provides a space where students can socialize with one another, ask questions of faculty, and receive guidance regarding professional opportunities uh, available in the field. The overall benefits of a blending learning environment are that they allow students to have some similarity between those students taking on-ground classes and those enrolled strictly online like here at Ashford. In a traditional on-ground MPH program, students would have daily interactions with faculty and fellow students and the discussion of the practicum and other discipline related topics would just be naturally occurring kind of spontaneous. You're walking down the hall, Dr. So-and-so, I have a question. In an online space, we're not afforded that opportunity for extended spontaneous conversation. I, I know for my program, the MPH program, over 80% of my students are working full time. So to help bridge the gap between traditional and online, the practicum resource center and the MPH learning communities act as virtual meeting spaces where students, faculty, and staff can interact and discuss the practicum, needs for program completion, and ultimately how best to utilize their degree following graduation. Blended learning environments are certainly the path of the future for online learning. More and more students are showing a preference for online courses, and the goal is to ensure that the online options mirror the rigor and kind of the bespoke conversations that are possible uh, in the on-ground environment as much as is practical. And looking to the future, uh, as technology continues to develop, and more and more students begin selecting online, the online modality, uh, a greater emphasis will need to be placed on these interactions. That's, that's gonna be the key. While most students are choosing online due to scheduling conflicts, you know, with work, family, whatever it may be, that choice to choose online does not include a desire to have zero or distant interactions with their instructor or their classmates. So they all still want to feel the value they're acquiring with their education. So with advances in technology and the continued development of blended learning environments, 
a greater number of courses will likely begin offering synchronous or asynchronous options, um, dedicated spaces like we're doing with the, uh, this presentation today and what other courses do. And, and ultimately, as more Americans become comfortable interacting with people over video, the platforms that support this option will continue to grow in popularity, as we've already begun to see uh, where most of the graduate programs here at Ashford have multiple kind of touch points for their students. Um, so now Peter will provide a brief overview of the alternative online program that we use here in the Master of Public Health program. Thank you. So for starters, the Master of Public Health program helps individuals interested in the healthcare field. This program includes online and in-person experiences by having students complete required classwork as well as supervised clinical trainings. Given the unique nature of this type of program, in order to enhance the student experience, the faculty, along with a variety of other stakeholders, began discussing creative options to help modify the traditional 100% online format to provide students with this opportunity. This idea led to the creation of a separate space from the required coursework to make sure that all individuals had the support to successfully navigate through the documents, forms, processes, and other required steps and completed their practicum experience. This space known as the Practicum Resource Center was built to align with the vision and the goals of the program. Now, Dr. Holmes is going to provide details explaining the background of the MPH program and the MPH PRC. Thank you, Peter. The, the MPH program here at Ashford University meets and in many cases exceeds the national curriculum standards that have been established by the Council on Education for Public Health or CEEF. Uh, CEEF is our national accrediting body for public health schools and programs, and they continue to expand on the guidance that they make available through online only programs like we offer. Uh, for the MPH program at Ashford University, one of the key aspects that helps our program exceed those national standards is the inclusion of a practicum. Practicums are pretty uncommon for online only uh, programs. So a practicum, for those of you not familiar, is an offsite internship that allows students to utilize the knowledge they've acquired in their core courses and apply it in a real world public health setting. The practicum is an invaluable experience in that it not only allows students to acquire real world experience they can put on a resume or CV, which almost every employer is looking for, but also allows them to professionally network with public health professionals. <clears throat> and for speaking for myself, I know the majority of my graduates have found their full-time employment so rapidly because of this you know, professional networking. To help MPH students have a successful practicum uh, at the beginning, it's critical to outline the key steps of the process. It's of great importance to make certain that the student is able to find a site and an opportunity they believe will help them in a career. So to assist in this goal, students are able to access the practicum resource center on day one of their enrollment. Uh, they're also able to examine the MPH practicum handbook view a sort of materials, videos of the processes, anything that we could create to help them understand what's happening as soon as possible. This course content is reinforced to the MPH curriculum to help students stay on pace to graduate in a timely manner. One of the most unique aspects of the Practicum Resource Center is the step-by-step -step approach that we've employed. In a traditional on-ground MPH program, you're provided a practicum handbook upon acceptance, and then that outlines the steps of the successful practicum. And then throughout the semester, students can speak to instructors. That's what I had at Illinois. Um, in an online environment, the process is very similar, but without that spontaneous interaction, it does require a little bit more guidance on our part. In the PRC, we provide students a practicum handbook upon enrollment, but then supplement that content with a roadmap of the steps in a dedicated Canvas environment so that it, they can really understand the order of events that need to occur for their practicum to launch because it's not, it's not an easy process. Uh, to further assist with the, uh, the practicum process, students are also able to choose a faculty advisor to help them with professional questions related to public health and whether this practicum site will help them achieve their career goals. In addition, we also have a practicum coordinator that helps them with the paperwork and things that are required for this uh, unique externship. Uh, to date, the program and the process, I believe have been extremely successful. Uh, the 15 graduates the program has had since our launch in February of 2018, all of them have secured full-time employment in the health field. So as a program chair, I feel great pride in that, but I think that also speaks uh, to the effort that uh, myself and Peter have put into the PRC. So now Peter will kind of showcase and discuss the Practicum Resource Center. Thank you. So now that we have the background information, um, I wanted to go through the actual MPH Practicum Resource Center so you can kind of see how it looks and as it, how, how it compares to standard Ashford courses. So as 
was mentioned before, instead of having various instructors and infinite number of sections that copy every week, we have one individual who leads this resource center and we call that person a coordinator. As soon as the students are enrolled in the MPH program, they are automatically added to the practicum resource center. While progressing through their program, they can reach out to the practicum resource coordinator, who is the primary point of contact for students. The practicum coordinator acts as a guide through the student's practicum experience. In this case, we've retained the Ask Your Coordinator section that allows students easy access to their coordinator. And as you can see, the MPH practicum actually also has an email address where students can use to email directly. Going back to the home page, um, I wanted to show a little bit about how it looks and point out some of the differences that we have in the resource center that aren't shown in typical courses. So for starters, we have the homepage image. We also have a video introduction that goes over the details of the MPH program. And then we also have a written introduction, which discusses a little bit about what the practicum resource center is. Then we incorporate horizontal module bars that instead of using week one, week two, week three, week four, we have specific naming conventions for practicum information, preliminary work section, preparatory work section, and also the practicum section. Similarly, we also have unique naming conventions for each of the assignments and discussions that the students will be completing throughout their practicum experience. Now with this, we wanted to make sure that we tried our best to stay as consistent as, consistent as possible with the Ashford courses so that the students aren't having to relearn a different way, a different course, while they're in their MPH program. Next, we're going to take a look at some of the unique pages in the Master of Public Health Practicum Resource Center to help you get a good feel for the uniqueness of this program and of this space. So first, we're gonna take a look at the Unnatural Causes Video Library. Now this section houses a variety of multimedia content that will help students along the way. In the Natural Causes Video Library, students have a variety of videos on various topics that directly help align with public health, to help them gain additional perspectives and insight on various topics they will discuss and learn throughout their program. In this case, when building, we have the videos in one column on the left-hand side, and then we have the title of the video on the right-hand side, and the student's able to click on the link, open it up in a separate browser, or they can actually view the video within the same browser to kind of make it feel like it's a movie that they're looking at. Next, we'll take a look at the practicum related appendices and forms. This space is kind of taking the place of your traditional required or recommended resources. It includes a variety of forms, links, and documents that students will need to complete on their journey. Each of these is linked to a unique URL that can be updated on the back end with minimal Canvas specific updates needed. Okay, next we have the practicum handbook, similar to how the course guide is linked on the homepage. We have the practicum handbook that's also linked on the homepage that students can view to see what they have to do next. Then we have a course completion checklist, which again provides students a step-by-step -step list on what they need to complete while they're in their practicum experience. In this case, students have two different paths. One is if they're petitioning for practicum equivalent experience. And then the second, if the students are not petitioning for the practicum equivalent experience. If they are petitioning for practicum equivalent experience, they would have to go through different approvals in order to uh, complete 60 practicum hours of practicum work. If they're not petitioning, the students would be completing the standard 90 practicum hours. Now, regardless of the options that the students are in, they are going to be completing their practicum after they complete their core courses. And also they'll be doing their practicum after they complete all preliminary work sections and preparatory work section. So it's not like they're completing all of this work during their core curriculum. They have specialized practicum courses after the, co the core curriculum is completed where the students would be completing their practicum. Next, we're going to take a quick look 
at how the modules are set up so you have a better understanding of the processes with this particular program. Now, in this case, the preliminary work section, we have a large image on front, and then we have an introduction and preliminary work activities side by side. So as the students are working through the preliminary work section, they would again, read the introduction, and then they have the various activities that they're completing in this section. As we navigate through the preliminary work section, we added a progress bar to tell the students how many steps they have left and how many steps they've completed during this preliminary work section. And then again, as we scroll through, we have various activities, assignments, and pages that the students will complete in order to satisfy all the requirements of this section. Now this setup is the same, whether you are in the preliminary work section, the preparatory work section, or the practicum section at the end. Now, as we mentioned, once the students finish the preliminary work and preparatory work section, they'll be enrolled in their practicum courses. And also they'll be moving on to this practicum module that requires them to submit weekly contact hour logs, evaluation forms, and practicum presentation. Now, if we look at the practicum, final practicum presentation, for the last step of this practicum, the students are going to be completing a final practicum presentation, and they're going to be completing it and submitting it in their MPH 652 or 653 program, which are the practicum core courses. Now, regardless of whatever stage the student is in, this practicum resource center is built and aligned to the MPH program. With this being said, I'm going to show you how the MPH Practicum Resource Center has been aligned in the MPH program courses itself. So you get a better feel for how the faculty have chose to connect and align the Resource Center with their core courses. So first, we're going to take a look at MPH uh, 602. In MPH 602, we have the week two resources section, which specifies multimedia resource of the Natural Causes video library. So in this case, the students are required to view this video, the Place Matters video, and also they're going to be linked directly back to the Practicum Resource Center as part of this course. Now, as we go to the week two assignment, the students again, are going to be using this video to answer some questions and to write an assignment based off of this video. So again, it shows the alignment between the courses themselves and the Practicum Resource Center. Next, we'll take a look at MPH 603. Now, in this case, we have the week five discussion that discusses the Practicum Resource Center as well. So again, the students are going to be looking at different videos using their knowledge of the video library to help answer this discussion as they converse and collaborate with their classmates. As they move on to MPH 607, in the week one poster introduction, the students are going to have to um, be required to work on their preliminary work section. In this case, they're completing a couple of the assignments and activities that are specified in the MPH PRC. And again, as we move on to the next course, MPH 621, they again are going to be referencing the Practicum Resource Center, making sure that the students are completing the preliminary work section and also making sure the students are staying on track with all the PRC requirements as they finish up their core curriculum. Now, after all of their core curriculum is completed, the students are moving on to their practicum courses. Now the practicum courses are going to be MPH 650, 651, 652, and 653. In each case, all of these practicum courses are the only classes the students will be in during their practicum experience. In this first case, practicum one, the students are gonna be working on various assignments and activities that relate to their practicum experience. And they'll also finish up their final project with beginning the stages of their final practicum presentation. In MPH 650, 
the students will be creating their final outline of the practicum presentation in this course, and then they'll be submitting it as a grade, as an assignment. Next, the students will move on to MPH 651 practicum two. And again, as mentioned, they're continuing to learn, develop and grow throughout the program. But in this case, instead of creating the outline, now the students are creating the final slides for their practicum presentation. Next, they'll move on to MPH 652, which is practicum number three. In this case, they will actually be turning in, submitting their final practicum presentation. So as you can see, practicum course builds on top of each other, asking students to develop their skills, develop their PowerPoint presentation, and then finally present their work um, in the assignments. Now for those students that are still working through their practicum hours, they will be enrolled in what we call an extension course, which is practicum four. So not every student will be enrolled in MPH 653. However, if some students do need that additional time to complete their practicum, they then will be enrolled in practicum four, which is pretty much a, a very similar to MPH 652, where they're working on their final practicum presentation. Now, as we can see with the launch of this new style of course, it has helped to set the framework and foundation of two additional resource centers, including the Beecham Professional Practicum Experience and the MAC Practicum Resource Center. So it really goes to show the strength of the MPH program that they were able to develop this practicum um, resource center, practicum resource center, and it also served as a model for two additional programs. In the case of the Beecham Practicum Resource Center, um, the Bachelor of Science in Health Information Management created their own resource center to help align with the goals of their program. It's very similar in setup where they have the course home image, it has a written introduction, and then it has the various modules that are aligned with the verbiage and the information used in this, these courses. So in this case, they have checklists, they have tip sheets, they have an improved site list, and then the various activities that the students have to complete during their practicum. Now again, as I mentioned, there's one more program that decided to take a similar approach, and that's going to be the Master of Arts in Counseling. They also created their own resource center to help align with their program. It has a similar setup to MPH PRC with the course home image, and then it also has their written introduction, and then it has its various modules, preliminary work, preparatory work, and the practicum modules to help showcase and align with the goals of this program. Either way, whatever program that you have, it all came back from the MPH PRC as that, that first initial practicum course. So thank you for joining our presentation on the Practicum Resource Center. We hope you have a better understanding of one option that you can use to integrate into your program when considering using practicum experience and other types of internships. As always, if you have any questions or comments on how to best incorporate this method into your program, please reach out to your program manager who can further assist you on the steps needed to incorporate a resource center for your needs. Thank you, Peter and Charles, and thank you to everyone in the audience today for your participation in today's session. Uh, we hope that you'll take a moment to complete the brief feedback survey in the link that's posted in the chat. And we encourage you to attend the next featured presentation with Ashford University President, Dr. Craig Swenson. Uh, this presentation is scheduled to take place in just about six minutes. Um, please remember you can access all the presentations uh, via the Eventbrite page. I hope you all enjoy the rest of TLC.